Now with surface mount we know that uh, during reflow soldering voids can occur. You have to decide what is relevant to you. If having a 5% or a 10% or a 30% uh, voiding within a solder joint, particularly under uh, bottom termination components, is an issue to you. If it's not an issue to you, then don't worry about it. It's not going to really affect uh, the reliability of the circuit board. Uh, generally, people tend to look uh, to achieve less than 20% voiding of a particular area. However, you've got to decide on what's acceptable to you. Now, we can reduce voiding by looking at uh, the design of the stencil with the solder paste, the design of the printed circuit board, if it's the board that's actually causing the problem in the first place. However, if you have a problem board or a problem component or you can't change the solder paste or any other parameters, then you can consider vacuum soldering. Now basically with vacuum soldering you're sucking out the void or you're sucking out what is trapped within the void effectively. And this is done when the solder is in a liquid state. So we're reflowing the board when the solder goes into a liquid state. We slowly pull a vacuum within a sealed chamber where the board or boards are sitting and slowly the void disappears outside the bulk of the joint and we're left with no voids at all. Now I've successfully done this with QFN, BGA and some SO packages and it can be done. The consequence of using vacuum soldering may be a slower process. Uh, of course you've got to look at the equipment issues. Uh, of course of cost of using vacuum soldering. Um, there are alternatives and of course many paste manufacturers who developed paste which really do have extremely low voiding capability. So again that's your first port of call but as an alternative if you really need to go to as close as you possibly can to zero voids then vacuum soldering is certainly an option to look at.